so clear. Look at this, just gorgeous. I think it's time to go in. It's so much better now. Really cool, but not too cold. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Glencoe video. In last week's video, I took you to Glencoe on a beautiful June day. It was just the most perfect summer day. We spent so much time by this little river, just swimming, picnicking, painting, and really enjoying those summer vibes. I shared a lot of this painting process in last week's video. I find painting waterfalls from life really helpful for studying how the different light effects happen on the moving water as well as the surrounding rocks. There's a lot of light bouncing around. So in today's video, I thought I would take you back to the studio and show you how I practice painting this kind of thing at home. Although I find this kind of scene easier to paint from life, it wasn't always the case. Even just a couple years ago, I would really struggle to be able to see the different colors on the different areas of the scene from life. And that was partially because I just wasn't used to it. It takes a long time to just observe, to stare at something and really soak in all of the colors and just information that's in front of you before you can distill that down and translate that to the paper. In addition, depending on your style preferences, your, your personal aesthetic, you might alter colors and ways of mark making to suit you better. And that will also take a lot of experimentation. So you observe and then you experiment and you see what you like and what you don't like and you just keep repeating that process over and over. What I'm doing first is sort of drawing with watercolor or like filling in the majority of the page with a very light version of the final painting, mainly as a way to establish my overall composition and shapes. And although I did a quick sketch beforehand, that was an even looser version of this. <laughs> so that was to get me started. And now I'm really trying to sort out where I want my focus to be, my rocks, my streams, you know, all of the flowy bits. And then after this dries, I can come back with more depth and detail. So at this point in the painting, I am trying to think of what makes it special. Like, why am I painting it? What am I going to focus on in this exact scene that I've already established to draw someone in? I mean, yeah, someone might just love waterfalls and just be attracted to the painting because it's a waterfall, but I always like to create something in the painting, some, some special moment, I guess something that goes beyond just what it is and appeals to everyone or lot, a lot of different people. So maybe that's certain shadow shapes or splashes or the way certain things bleed together. Maybe it's just co contrast or color. I don't know, but I have to decide. I think the shadow shapes are going to be really important to establish depth in the rocks, maybe a little bit on the water as well and everything else is kind of secondary like the um, shapes of the grasses and and the majority of the rocks don't matter it's only a few select that really need to pop out and, and make a statement so let's see what we can do 
when I'm trying to convey this sense of movement, and in this case, it's obviously the waterfall itself, I use a couple different strategies. One is to always keep my brush moving. I find, and this just might be a personal thing for me, is that if I don't continuously move my brush, my, my brush strokes, my marks get very, very stiff and repetitive. So I end up with a lot of noticeable patterns in my rock formations and the water, like streaks of, of color that I'm applying. And I think it's also a second or a side effect of painting outside a lot and having to work pretty quickly because, you know, the weather and the lighting changes so fast that my brush or now it's much more natural for me to keep my brush moving. If I find that the scene isn't developing in a way that pleases me, it's usually because I've slowed down and I'm overthinking every single brush stroke. And I get comments on my videos a lot that say, wow, you make it look so easy. You just, you know, swish the brush around and voila, there's a thing. <laughs> it's magic. But honestly, this was years and years of practice and doing it over and over again, whether it felt comfortable or not. A lot of times I'm outside painting, I'm looking at my subject almost more than I'm looking at my paper. And because of that, I'm continuously moving my brush and reacting to what I see in person, and it just becomes second nature. So it's a strategy you might want to try if you want to get this very fresh, loose feeling. And another thing I like to do is let color bleed together a lot more than I maybe initially think I need to. <laughs> so either in the shadow shapes of the rocks or in the water itself, I will start with a blue or a purple and then I'll touch in a brown while it's wet because a lot of times it, there's a lot of gray and brown mixed in to what we're seeing that we might not notice because saturation really pops out to us. I think it's just something that has to do with our, our human eye sees color and sees a lot of contrast. So just try touching in some grays and browns here and there to sort of um, not di well, yeah, I guess dilute the saturation and it ends up being a little bit more natural. You can still play with all that fun color, but just see, try it out and see how it goes, especially in moving water. When the waterfall, uh, when the water changes direction and flows down a rock really steeply, you'll often see the rocks behind it or under it showing through and it's a little more brown. Um, or the water itself has a lot of color to it and that's when you when it's all frothy you really start to notice how brown it is I hope you enjoyed this video and this little mini series of Glencoe. I'm sure I'm going to be painting other scenes from this trip in the future, but for now I'm going to start packing for my watercolor workshop next week. Very excited and I'll definitely share some experiences from that trip as well. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care.